So let's study the uh, calculus two uh, exam two. So I'm going to go through each question and show you uh, how to solve those problems. Um, so let's start with the first problem. Uh, so it was uh, two far. It's a uh, trigonometric integrals problem. Uh, so there were like 18 points. Uh, there were three parts. So the first part is to integrate uh, sine squared uh, theta over two. And when you see this uh, even power you notice that uh, you had used the uh, double angle or the half angle formula in this case half angle formulas uh, so and you can see this is sine squared uh, so that means uh, we can recall one of the formula uh, we know that uh, so i'm going to write the formula like this uh, so we have one of the formula which says that uh, sine squared theta equal one minus cosine you double the angle and theta so we call uh, this is the half angle formula uh, so this is the formula uh, we can use here so uh, so if you use this formula what you want to do is you have to double the angle so here the angle is theta by 2 so when you double it become theta so that means if you use the formula you simply you can write is the integral of uh, so to double the angle and it's become cosine so it's one minus if you uh, double it's become simply cosine theta divided by two so that's the formula uh, so it's very simple integral if you want this is like uh, not a necessary steps you can take one half out so we have one minus cosine theta and you can see this is a very simple uh, integral so you get one half if you integrate uh, one you get theta if you integrate cosine you get sine theta so uh, plus c so so that's the answer for the first part so let's move on to the second part and you can see it's a very very simple problem so you need to figure out this is a uh, use the square that means the even power so the even power tells you that you have to use uh, uh, one of those formulas uh, good so let's look at the next problem so the next problem tells you that uh, so this is the problem so it is square root sine x and cosine cube and you can see this is the odd uh, function situation when we have sine cosine with the odd power uh, so what we normally use uh, the other form um, function so here you can see that you're going to see the square root x uh, square root sine x so that's going to tell you everything so that means this tells you that because we know that the derivative of sine is cosine and uh, which has a odd power so that's perfect so that means what we're going to do is uh, we're going to pick uh, u equal sine x so once you pick uh, u equal sine x we know that the derivative is the cosine x uh, dx and some of you forgot the dx that's important okay um good so if you use that so that means it says that you need a cosine term so what we're going to do we're going to isolate a cosine term here so we're going to rewrite this one as uh, sine x uh, square root means one half you can write it if you want like that and then what we're going to do we're going to uh, take cosine squared x and we're going to isolate a cosine x term for the derivative now we're going to um, rewrite everything else in terms of sine because that's a substitution. We have substitution sine. So we can write everything in terms of everything else in terms of sine. So that means we can write this one as sine uh, x to the square root. Some steps are unnecessary, but I'm writing this for uh, for clarity. So that's you write everything. So it, uh, that that term. And then we're going to leave this term uh, like that because that's the derivative okay now we can substitute so once you substitute what's going to happen uh, this is uh, u so u uh, one half and this become one minus u squared uh, cosine x dx is simply du you can see this is simply du so we can write du okay now you can see that everything in terms of u uh, we can dis uh, distribute once you distribute uh, you're going to get u to the one half and u to the one half and u squared that means you're going to add uh, two to one half that means you're going to be a uh, five half and you can see this is a very easy to integrate just the power rule so if you integrate you can add one uh, and divide it by that that means you're going to be uh, two third u to the uh, 
three halves this can be uh, two fifth u to the five half plus c you can leave it like that what you can you can substitute back let me you uh, um, you're gonna be two third uh, this is sine so sine um, three halves x minus two fifth sine uh, five half x uh, plus c so that's the answer uh, with all the steps so let's look at the uh, next problem so the next problem is uh, this one we have we have a sine we have a secant and tan problem so when you have a secant tan problem there are two approaches uh, what we're going to do we're going to see whether you can isolate secant square term and write everything else in terms of tan um, the other way is you can isolate secant x tan x and uh, write everything else of else using secant and you can see that in this case it is very easy to isolate a secant square term so that means the substitution is going to be u equal tan. So the substitution is u equal tan x. And once you do that, uh, you can see that the derivative is simply secant uh, squared x dx. So that tells you what you uh, need to do. Um, so we can isolate a secant squared term and write everything else in terms of tan. That's what we learned. So, so let's do that. So that means we're going to prepare this. So what we can do, we can write this one as secant uh, squared x and then uh, tan uh, 10 x and then we can isolate secant squared x uh, for the derivative. So we are going to touch that and then uh, we can write everything else in terms of tan. So secant squared means one of the identities. It is 1 plus uh, tan squared x over tan x over tan 10 x. And this is the derivative term uh, dx. Uh, let's substitute. So it is very simple. Um, so once we substitute, uh, we know that this is uh, 1 plus this is u. So u squared over u to the 10. This is du. Okay, you can see this is simply du. Good. Now what we can do, you can see it's a function of u. Uh, so uh, what we can do, we can divide the both terms by u to the 10. So if you do that, you're going to get uh, uh, u to the negative 10. It's easy to write it like that. Plus, if you divide this one, you could get u to the negative 8 um, du. And then just, just use the power rule. So if it's the power rule, you can add 1 and divide it by that. That means you can write this one as negative 1 over 9, u to the negative 9. Here also, um, negative 1 over 7, u to the negative 7 plus c. Uh, what we can do is you can substitute for u, uh, u equal tan x. So, uh, so let's write this one as negative 1 over 9, uh, tan negative 9x minus 1 over 7, tan uh, negative 7x uh, plus c. If you remember, uh, this is negative power. That means you can bring it down. You can also write this one as as cotangent but this is perfectly fine but if you remember that then you can also write this same solution as 1 over 9 cotangent uh, 9x minus uh, 1 over 7 um, cotangent uh, 7x uh, plus c but i know like uh, some people try to find another route and unnecessarily uh, try to convert this into um, cotangent and secant and had a long way and get uh, the same answer but this is very straightforward because this is a tan secant problem uh, so this is the natural uh, way to do it we isolate a secant term so that's what we normally do for this kind of problems okay that's the first problem so let's go to the next problem um, so this problem is the uh, trig uh, sub problem so when you do a uh, trigonometric substitution we know that there are three type of problems uh, one for x equal a sine theta, the other one is x equal a tan theta, uh, the third one is x equal a secant theta. And once you look at this problem, and you can see this is 1 minus x squared. When you have 1 minus x squared, it is automatically um, x equal a uh, sine theta. In this case, a equal 1. So that means your substitution is going to be x equal uh, a sine theta. So that's what you get. And then you take the derivative. Once you take the derivative, sine become cosine x. So in this cosine theta, d theta. 
now what we can do we're going to go back and substitute uh, to the problem uh up to the expression so you can see it is uh, one over uh so one minus sine uh, square theta to the uh, three halves power times dx ds x is simply cosine x uh, cosine theta d theta now let's simplify this a little bit and you can see one minus sine squared means cosine squared from the pythagorean identity so this simply become cosine square theta to the three halves power so it simplifies very well cosine theta d theta so this is because of the uh, trigonometric identity uh, i'm going to write the identity so we know that the uh, uh, we know that the cosine uh, square theta or 1 minus sine square theta equal cosine square theta that's the reason and then uh, so you can see you can simplify this uh, so this is squared to the uh, 3 halves so that means when you yes power of power you multiply this become cosine cube so this simply uh, become uh, cosine uh, cube sorry so this simply become one over uh, cosine cube theta and then this is cosine theta and you can see one of them get cancelled so this simply becomes uh, one over uh, cosine square theta d theta or in other words now this is secant square theta d theta this is very easy to integrate once you integrate uh, you're going to see that this simply end up getting tan theta uh, plus c uh, so this is perfectly fine uh, using the new variable but that's not your answer because you need to write uh, using the original variable original variable is um, x so what we can do we can draw the triangle so this is where we draw the triangle so uh, say x equals sine theta so that means so we can say sine theta which is x x means x over 1 so you can draw the triangle here uh, so this is something necessary so this is sine so that means uh, opposite of a hypotenuse uh, and then we can find the uh, other side using the pythagorean identity so it is 1 minus x squared uh, square root now uh, tan tan means opposite of adjacent uh, so that means simple opposite means x the adjacent is 1 minus x squared square root uh, plus c so that's the final answer uh, using the uh, uh, the uh, triangle okay good uh, so let's look at the next one so what's the next part uh, so this is 1 over x squared minus 4 square root and then you can see the format tells you what the substitution so that's the format when you have x squared minus uh, a constant id is the secant so the substitution secant in this case uh, a equal because 4 means 2 squared that means a equal 2 so we can write this one as so the substitution is simply x equal 2 secant theta uh, so take the derivative if you take the derivative dx is 2 a uh, derivative of secant means secant tan so secant theta tan theta uh, d theta now we can substitute so let's substitute that so let, uh, once we substitute uh, it's going to be 1 over um, so this is uh, x so that means 4 uh, secant uh, square theta minus 4 square root and then dx dx is 2 secant theta uh, tan theta uh, d theta now uh, so you can see this is 4 uh, you can see this under square root so if you take 4 as a factor under square root it become uh, 2 that means you can write this one as 2 secant square theta minus 1 square root and then this is 2 uh, secant theta uh, tan theta d theta now uh, you can see uh, 2 and 2 get cancelled and then we also know that the secant square theta minus 1 is simply tan square theta so we can use that here so that means this is 1 over uh, tan square theta from the identity trigonometric identity and under square root um, secant theta uh, tan theta d theta 
so this is the Pythagorean, uh, one of the Pythagorean identities. Okay, we know that the secant square theta minus one is simply tan square theta. Now this under square root, so they get cancelled. So that means uh, you're gonna get uh, one over tan theta, and we have secant theta tan theta d theta. You can see uh, tan and tan get cancelled. So you simply get um, secant theta d theta integral but we know that the secant theta uh, the integral of secant theta that's one of the formulas that we need to remember it is the natural log a secant plus tan so secant theta plus tan theta uh, plus c that's what you get um so under the new variable we are done but we still need to find the secant and tan uh, using the formula uh, using the triangle uh, so let's do that now so this says that uh, the um, uh, secant theta is x over 2. Um, so in other words, cosine theta is 2 over x, if that is easy for you. Let's draw the triangle. So this is, you pick theta. So this is the um, cosine, that means adjacent, which is 2, hypotenuse, which is x. So if you use a Pythagorean identity, you square the uh, so x squared minus 4 square root. That's from the Pythagorean identity. So you can easily find tan from this one. So tan is simply, um, so you can see, tan theta is simply um, opposite over adjacent. So now we're going to substitute that into the formula. So this is ln secant theta, which is x over 2, and then tan theta, which is x squared minus 4 square root over 2 plus c uh, and if you want you can uh, further simplify this one but this is perfectly fine you can see one half is common so you can take it out and combine that with c that's like extra step if you want otherwise this is the answer so it's perfectly fine but if you want to simplify it completely this is x plus x squared minus 4 square root and we're going to put that that one half ln one half under c so we can write c it's not the same c but we just write it like that yep so that is the simplification and i write all the steps but you can see some steps are not really necessary uh, you can skip some of the steps but this is just for uh, clarification with all the necessary steps okay so uh, that's number uh, two um, and you can see this one problem worth like eight points in the exam uh, so let's go to the next one so next one is about uh, partial fractions. So this is another technique that you uh, need to remember. Uh, so if you look at the uh, problem, you can see um, you can easily factor the denominator. So what are the factors? So if you factor the denominator and you can see that this is uh, x uh, minus um, x plus 4 and x minus 6. So those are the two factors. So let's write the form. Uh, so you can see the uh, form is 10 over uh, x squared minus. Uh, so let's, since we know the factors, let's have the factored form. So it is x uh, plus 4 and x minus 6. This is identical to uh, a over, uh, let's say, the first one and plus b over the second one. Now what we need to do is we need to find the... Uh, Two, what we do, we're going to multiply uh, by the denominator. So we're going to say 10 identical to 8 times x minus 6, b times uh, x plus 4. Now we're going to substitute. So if you substitute, uh, you can say x equal negative 4. Uh, you get 10 equal a. If you put negative 4, uh, this becomes negative 10 plus 0. So that means a equal uh, negative 1. And if you substitute x equal uh, 6, um, you get 10 equal 0 plus uh, b times 10. This says that b equal 1. So we get the uh, two uh, constants. So now we can see, we know, the frac. Uh, um, so we can go back to the... Uh, problem so we got the uh, proper uh, fractions now 
so that means this is simply equals to uh, so a equal negative 1 uh, b equal 1 so that means this is simply negative 1 over x plus 4 uh, plus 1 over x plus 6 dx and you can see this is very easy to integrate so the first one tells you that it is uh, negative natural log x plus 4 and the second one is natural log x plus 6 remember you have to have the uh, absolute value sign here uh, don't use the parentheses uh, because if you use parentheses you are missing a half of the problem okay half of the answer good so that's the uh, first uh, problem so let's try to look at the second one I think this is very clear okay so uh, when you look at the second problem uh, so let's try the form first uh, so I'm going to do all the uh, partial fraction part here so the form is 5x squared minus 2x plus 3 this is already factored uh, x minus 1 x squared plus 1 identical to and you can see the x minus 1 as a linear factors that's me a over uh, x minus 1 plus uh, the second one is x squared plus 1 so this is a quadratic that means the top has to be linear so bx plus c so that's the form so the goal is to find the um, find abc so you can see uh, so when you uh, multiply through you're going to get 5x squared minus 2x plus 3 which is identical to a times the other one x squared plus 1 plus here you're going to get uh, bx minus c uh, x minus 1 when you do a problem like that you try to use the substitution as much as you can so in this case you can see uh, you can use a substitution uh, you can say substitute uh, x equal uh, 1 so if you substitute x equal 1 uh, you're going to get uh, what do you get on this side so when you substitute 1 uh, you're going to get 5 minus 2 which is 3 plus 3 so which is 6 you get 6 equal uh, on the other side when you plug in x equal 1 the second term get cancelled so you only get the first one so you're going to get a times 2 so you get a times 2 so this is that a equal uh, 3 and then uh, uh, we can do uh, we normally go with the coefficients so let's go with the coefficients uh, so I'm gonna go with the coefficients of the largest term so if you do coefficient of largest term there's 5 uh, x squared you get a and you get x squared uh, when you multiply b x and c so you get b uh, that's the coefficient of x squared and this says that since a equal uh, 3 b is 2 so only thing left is uh, we need to find um, C for that you can just go with the uh, um, constant term uh, so the just plug in x equals 0 okay so you substitute uh, x equals 0 so if you substitute x equals 0 um, that means you consider the constant term if you have x equals 0 you get 3 equal uh, a which is 3 uh, and then x equals c uh, and then you're going to get actually this is as a plus sign it didn't affect uh, anything before uh, so you get an uh, uh, minus c so minus c so that means this is that c equals 0 okay so you get all three and uh, now what we're going to do we're going to go back and substitute that here so that means your problem now simply going to be uh, a uh, equals so 3 over x minus 1 plus b is 2 c so you get 2x over x squared plus 1 uh, dx and you can see this is uh, very easy to integrate so the first one is 3 natural log uh, x minus 1 and second one you can see using the four formula trick you can see the top is the uh, derivative of the bottom so since the top is the derivative of the bottom, uh, you can see this is just a natural log of the bottom function. Uh, since this is positive, we just use the parentheses uh, plus c. So that's the answer for the second problem, second part. Okay, so it's, it's a very simple one. Um, 
so we have done a lot of problems like that and if it is not clear uh, what you can do is you can substitute u equal uh, x squared plus 1 and then you can see uh, du is simply the top so that that way also you can work okay but you don't need that just the uh, four formula trick okay just use the four formula trick we normally say f f and you're gonna get the answer right there that's very quick okay so that's about that um so let's look at the uh, next problem uh, so which is the uh, different type of integral so you need to figure out what is the substitution you might not see directly what is it look like um so you can see if you look at the first problem carefully and you can see you have inside function and you have the derivative here so that means this directly tells you that uh, you're going to use u equal ed plus one that's a substitution so let's do that um, so uh, so we're going to use a substitution for the for the first one so i'm going to rewrite the problem uh, it is et uh, et uh, plus one to the one half uh, dt and the substitution was u equal uh, e t plus one and you can see the derivative is simply e t dt so that means this problem is simply going to be um, u to the one half du so that means uh, you're gonna this is very power just use a power rule so the u uh, you're gonna add one and divide by that and then what you need to do you have to uh, bring it back to the original variable that means to third um, so u is 1 plus ed so 1 plus et uh, 3 halves plus c so that's the problem so you can see it's a very simple problem and you got 8 point for that okay so that's like a easiest problem that you can get um, I know some of you did not get points for that but you can see it's a very very simple problem uh, let's look at number b um, so when you look at the problem uh, so you can see there's a, a theta and uh, trigonometric function so it is not directly a trigonometric integral uh, so you can see uh, secant square theta is very easy to integrate and that tells you that this is a um, integration by parts problem so we're going to see u equal uh, theta and dv equal secant uh, square theta d theta so take the derivative so that means du equal d theta integrate you get tan theta so we have everything we need so uv minus vdu uh, so let's plug in uv the product so this is theta uh, tan theta minus uh, vdu uh, so v means tan theta du means d theta now we know that uh, what is the uh, integral of tangent uh, that's one of the formula that you need to remember so um, so integral of tangent is secant theta uh, ln secant theta because you can write tangent as sine uh, cosine if you forget what we normally do is we can write this one as sine cosine and uh, you can see the top is the derivative uh, negative of the derivative of the bottom function or you can pull the uh, negative sign inside so if you do that you can say your final answer is going to be theta uh, tan theta so if you pull the negative sign inside that's just the derivative of the bottom function that means it's going to be natural log uh, the cosine uh, plus c so you can see it's a very simple problem and you get 16 point for that problem uh, but that's like a nice problem uh, good so let's look at the next problem uh, so problem number five uh, problem number five is the you are given a formula and you try to integrate a difficult problem okay so that's what what we're trying to do and that's exactly what's going to happen in the future you try to integrate some difficult problems using um, some uh, using the tables so this formula is given you don't have to prove that i know some people try to prove it uh, but that's not what is asking okay so you can use that so what you need to do is you need to bring it to this somehow so uh, what you're gonna do is this tells you that you need to get the form sine inverse u that means it tells you what the substitution you can see this should be sine inverse u that means it's gonna match with that so that means the substitution is simply u equal square root x that's what it tells it says that uh, so now what you do you take the derivative once you take the derivative uh, you know that this is um, one half 
so one half x to the negative one half dx or in other words uh, 1 over 2 square root x dx you can see square root x already there so that means uh, you can move 2 so that means you can write using the new variable uh, sine inverse square root x over square root x dx we substitute see there's a you can see dx of square root x is already there that match with that that means you can move 2 to the other side so that means it's going to be 2 sine inverse u du but this we know uh, from the formula formula says that this is simply equals to uh, integral of sine inverse u is simply equals to u sine inverse u plus 1 minus u squared square root uh, plus c but u equals square root x so we're going to put that there that means it is uh, square root x sine inverse square root plus u equals square root, so that means it's going to be 1 minus x square root plus c so this is a very simple problem and you get six point for that uh, to do it okay but what you need to remember is use the proper substitution to convert that into the formula that we have okay so let's go to uh, the next problem so the next problem is about uh, so this is a numerical integration problem and you need to uh, do two types one is a midpoint rule that means you're going to use uh, middle points and the simpson rule uh, so uh, if you get a problem like that uh, you want to know how many um, sub intervals we need so we have n equal four that means you can divide into uh, four parts so let's start with the uh, end points so we have um, then start with 0 and end at uh, 8 so jumps are so that means you cut into uh, 4 parts so we have uh, 2 uh, 4 and 6 so we cut into uh, 4 parts uh, so delta x is simply uh, so we have 8 minus 0 uh, into 4 so that means 2 so jumps are 2 okay um, so if you go to the first uh, first one uh, this is the uh, midpoint rule so if you go with the midpoint rule, uh, so we're going to be uh, no, four uh, cuts. Uh, so what the midpoint rule says, uh, the delta x, the gaps, and then uh, we're going to go with the mid middle point. So what are the middle points for this? So you can see um, uh, middle point of this one is one, middle point of this one is three, middle point of this one is five, middle point of uh, this one is seven. So you can evaluate the uh, function at the middle points. So that means formula delta x, that's a gap times the middle point so it is f1 plus f3 and then f5 and then f7 so that's the uh, middle point rule so let's find here it's a 2 and then go to the function and put a 1 so it is a function is e x squared that's a function so here fx equal e to the uh, x squared so let's find there so that means e to the uh, 1 squared that is 1 we normally don't write it and e to the 3 squared which is 9 e to the uh, 5 squared which is 25 and then e to the 7 square which is 49 so that's what you get from the middle point uh, midpoint rule and part b which is also the simpson rule uh, again uh, with 4 uh, simpson rule says uh, delta x over 3 and then we're going to go with uh, 1 4 2 4 um, 2 4 1 that format so that means uh, you have to go with each number so we're going to start with 0 that's the first node and then multiply by 4 the second node which is 2 and then multiply by 2 the next node which is 4 and then 4 the next node is 6 and then last one is 8 uh, so it's 8 so that's the uh, formula it is uh, 1 4 2 4 1 okay that's what you get you have 1 and 4 and then 2 and 4 and 1 so that's the format uh, so let's plug in so if you plug in you're going to get delta x is 2 so it's 2 over 3 uh, f0 you can plug in the function uh, at so function is this one at 0 so that means you get 1 this is 4 times e 2 square that's going to be 4 and then 2 times e to the 4 square which is 16 and then 4 
e to the uh, 6 square that is 36 plus 8 so e to the uh, 64 that's what you get from the simpson rule very simple problem and you get uh, 12 points now we have uh, only the last problem and you can see it didn't take much time so it's only 35 minutes and we have only one problem left and then i'm also writing all the details in there okay um good so let's do the last problem uh so which is about uh, what we call improper integrals so when you have improper integrals one of the important thing is about writing the limit so that's where many students lost points because they forgot to write the lim uh, limit um, so you need to look at the discontinuity and then uh, write the discontinuity using a limit okay so that's you have to be very careful with that um, so if you forgot to do that and then you can do it again in the final so make sure that uh, you try to write that first so in this problem you can see that's infinity so what we normally do is we replace infinity by uh, number and then send the number to a um, number to infinity so that means you can write this problem like this uh, so we can say it's a limit uh, what we normally use we use b for that so we can say b uh, goes to infinity so we're going from 1 to b and then 1 over x plus 1 dx and you can see uh, you don't need substitution for this problem one is just a constant when you have a constant you can simply ignore that when you try to find the format so this is exactly look like 1 of x okay it's exactly look like 1 of x that means uh, this simply limit uh, b goes to infinity and uh, this is a natural log x plus 1 okay one is a constant and then you evaluate at b and 1 those are the limits um, so let's evaluate so as a limit uh, b goes to infinity uh, so when you evaluate uh, so this is ln uh, we have b uh, plus 1 minus ln 2 Okay. ln2 is, is a number but what's going to happen now uh, b goes to infinity so b plus 1 also goes to infinity so if you look at the graph and you can see it's very clear as a graph of natural log uh, so this is x and this is ln x you can see uh, when uh, x goes to infinity function goes to infinity okay so that means uh, this is going to approach to infinity so that means at the and then ln2 is just a number so when you subtract that from infinity it doesn't matter that means so finally this limit is infinity so you get limit so you need to show this it's, it's infinity so that means it's not finite so this is goes this goes to infinity that means uh, uh, integral diverge so integral diverge okay so um so one to infinity one over x plus one dx diverges very simple okay because it's infinity it's diverge uh, so let's look at the next part of the problem and you can see it's a very very simple problem and make sure that you write the uh, the limit okay so this is very important the limit part. Uh, that's one of the part one of the important part of the improper integrals so let's do the next one uh, so this is the last problem uh, last part of the last problem uh, when you look at the problem and you can see uh, there is a discontinuity at the bottom uh, end point um, so that means you cannot just evaluate this one what you need to do is we need to consider the um, limit okay so there's a discontinuity at one so what we normally do is and you can see it's going from uh, one plus because it's coming from the positive values so it is the one plus problem so what we normally do is so the so you can see there is a discontinuity there is a discontinuity at uh, x equal one okay that's you notice so that means we're going to rewrite replace this problem like this you can see it's a limit um so you can say what we normally go we can use like a for that so we can say um a goes to one plus why is one plus is going to one through positive values okay so one plus large values not positive values large values and then you can evaluate from a to nine that nine there's no problem and then one now so that is the first step uh x minus one um uh, one third 
dx good uh, so now uh, how to do this so it's just the uh, evaluate the limit so first you need to evaluate the integral uh, so you can write this one as a to 9 x minus 1 negative 1 third so this is a very simple problem uh, now so let's evaluate that this is just use the power rule so if you use the power rule it is the limit uh, a goes to 1 plus it is 2 third x minus 1 uh, 3 halves oh no actually you get so that's uh, you get uh, 2 third you add 1 and 3 halves so you get 3 halves here 3 uh, halves evaluate at 9 and uh, a so so let's do that so it's a limit uh, a goes to 1 plus so let's evaluate so this is 2 third uh, you put 9 so 9 minus 1 2 third minus 3 has uh, so a minus 1 2 third and you can see a goes to 1 plus so that means this term goes to 0 and this is a positive power so that means the whole thing goes to 0 and you can see this just goes to uh, 0 good um, because the inside goes to 0 and it's a positive power goes to 0 and so finally you're gonna get uh, 3 halves 9 minus 1 is 8 so 8 2 third uh, what is 8 2 third uh, you can see when you have 8 2 third you take the third that means 2 and then we have um, square that means 4 so you get 6 okay. so you get 6 uh, which is a finite number so that means the integral converts okay so since this is a final number, the integral converts. So 1 to 9, 1 over x minus 1, the cube root dx converges. Okay, so that's all. Okay, so you can see it's not that difficult. And I'm also writing all the details in there. So you can finish the whole problem in oh, I'm less than 45 minutes. Okay. So it only took uh, 42 minutes. Okay, I hope uh, this helps for the future exams and try to study it again and make sure that you understand all the topics before the next exam. Okay, good luck. Thank you.